Joe's right is Trey Allen, who's a high jumper on our track and field team. And then Kaya Yeast to Joe's left, she is a sprinter on our track and field team. So we'll go ahead and open up the questions. Coach, can you uh, – I mean, the, the track season is so different. How do you – your philosophy, I guess, of, you know, indoor, outdoor, and how do you get them to get to the point where you want at the end of the outdoors or the indoor season, and then again at the end of the outdoor season? It just, it seems like such a long track season. It, it is, and, you know, these guys have been practicing since uh, September, so it is, uh, our season is super unique because we hope that they're both competing in July as well, so our season is very long, but Goal number one is make sure that these guys have opportunities. To make sure that they have uh, the resources and infrastructure they need with coaches and support staff to be able to reach the elite levels. Having said that, we also have to balance their competitions and when they compete. So Kaya may not compete every weekend. Trey may not jump every weekend. So you have to systematically uh, prolong the season. And we, in this part of the country, because of uh, the weather occasionally, we get excited to go inside. And then what you do when you go inside is you may change the way you do things, but we as coaches have to make sure that we temper that down because it is long. And we don't want to rush back from injury or illness because you get excited when you're indoors and you want to kind of push the envelope, and you can't do that. So I can give you a great example. Yesterday, Trey wasn't feeling great, so what did Trey do? Didn't practice. Didn't practice. Kaya tweaks her hammy just a little bit. We're in no rush to get her back because, again, we're progressing down the road. Since July, you've had been, I'm sure, been going a mile, 100 miles an hour all the time. You had a cross country season. You've had an indoor, you know, the start to the indoor season. Are you pleased with what has gone on? Staff, transfer portal, newcomers. You, you had a lot of things thrown at you. Have you come through it and you feel pretty good as you start this track season? I have because these guys make it easy. Uh, these guys obviously went through a challenging time last year, but have embraced the change which is important for us. Uh, so, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, we want to make sure that we just keep going and going and going, and these guys have embraced it, and it, those things are difficult, and that's understandable, uh, but they've been great. For either of you two, what, what's the change been like as far as, with the new coaching staff and that kind of thing. What's it been like for you guys to kind of go through that and, and now here you are competing? Well, I feel like uh, change has been good. Um, I'm not I'm not against change and the change has been good. Uh, we've been just, me and my coach, I like my coach. You know, actually, he, he's got me doing stuff that I feel benefits me and will benefit me in the future. And Joe, he's a great guy, great coach. He set me up for my future, so I just feel like they're looking out for me, and I appreciate that. Yeah, I definitely feel like the change has been good. It's definitely been something that I feel like everybody on the team has embraced. I feel like the coaching staff as a whole has really just set us up for, you know, success. I feel like the, the, the dynamic of the team is different this year in a positive way. So I feel like the change has really been something that everybody here needed, um, and I feel like it's really been a blessing in disguise. So what are, what do you kind of expect? What's what's the expectation? Well, that's, I guess that's, let's that's super simple. Okay. Um, for us as coaches to be able to look ourselves in the mirror and say, we've done everything in our power for these guys to not only be successful, sprinting, jumping, throwing uh, on the track, but also making sure they're successful and having every opportunity. Um, in the classroom and making sure they're making progress towards life. I want these guys to be able to say the same thing. I'm doing everything I possibly can. I'm doing everything right. I'm doing all the little things. So that's, that's the expectation and make sure, you know, I'll give you a great example. Uh, the other day we had a team meeting, first team meeting. It was, and track teams are always a little discombobulated just because we're all over the place. Everybody's on time. Everybody was there unless they had class. So just little things like that are great. 
you know, these guys were early for this meeting. That's little things that will pay off down the road. Because when you're an elite athlete, there are so many elite athletes. But it's those ones that do all the little things right that separate the seventh place finisher in the Olympic trials and the first place finisher in the Olympic trials. Because they're equally as talented. It's just doing those little things or the separation. So that's the expectation. What, what do you feel like the strength may be on the women's side and then a strength on the men's side of what you – as you start competing? And like you said, you're all over the place. you got so many different, you know, events in, in that. Are, do you feel like you have strengths on, on both sides that, that you're really confident about? They are, and they just, and, but they keep changing. But you look at – instead of looking at the strength from an objective performance base, let, let's look at the strength from the subjective support of each other. So these guys are um, supportive of each other when they're jumping and they're throwing and getting in. It's a unique team culture that has been very refreshing to me. So that they're incredibly supportive of each other. They're incredibly supportive of the university. So that's, that's what our strength would be. If, if you want me to say what is our best event area, you know, that's, that'll be determined at the AACC and the NCAA championship. Because there's good event areas everywhere. There's great event areas everywhere. So what happens when championship season? Because all this is progress towards the middle of March and the middle of June. For Trey or Gaia, Coach kind of touched on it, touched on it a little bit. But how have you maybe seen that culture piece translate to the competition side? Um, I feel like definitely the culture is way better this year. I feel like, like Joe said, it's way more supportive. You know, everybody shows up for the meets. Everybody cheers for each one another um, at the meets and not even just the meets, at practice. The practice environment is very supportive. You know, everybody cheers for one another during reps and everything at practice. So I feel like the culture as a whole, we've really come to the, together as a team this year, like with the change. And so I feel like it's just very positive this year. Uh, I feel like that as well. I feel like uh, like when I was jumping last weekend, I looked in the stands and like the whole team was there, and it was very like that was very important to me. Like it gave me like that extra push. It's like I really don't feel like jumping today, but now I do. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's watching me. I gotta perform, so I like that. Trey, you've won you won indoor ACC and you've won outdoor twice, right? In two years in a row, the success has been there. What's different now for you? What have you improved, do you feel like, as you go into this season? What's different, you know, for you? And then, Coach, if you could follow that up, what you've seen, you know, from Trey? I feel like what's better, for, what I've, like, improved on is just execution and just knowing my body-wise. Like, just, like, just training, not overtraining, just setting myself up for the future because I know I'm going to have a long season. So I just – I'm setting myself up best to be able to perform when I need to. I, I, it's more of an empowerment. So for these guys to be able to say, hey, I'm tired. I need a day. Uh, because it has to be a two-way street. Uh, one of the problems we get in in athletics is people want to push through injury or push through uh, being tired or sick or injured. And it's an empowerment to have real and hard discussions. Uh, but it's also a trust on, every, on everybody to make sure. So I would say being able to express just in the brief time that I've known these guys, and hopefully it's the culture that we're creating, is being able to express how they feel and not feel like they're going to get punished or chastised. Um, there, there's, there's a saying everybody has always heard, trust the process, right? That's a, a coach cliche, trust the process. Our interpretation on that is challenge the process and embrace the outcome. So then it's all mutual. Then there's uh, discussions that are happening. There are setting goals together as, as opposed to Kaya setting her goal and not talking to a coach about it or Trey setting his goal. Because I know that these guys have talked to their event coaches about those, and that's a collaboration that has to happen. And when you're at the elite level of track and field in any event, there is always a collaboration.
Can I say kind of the same thing? What have you? Do you feel like you've improved? What are you better at now? Or are you stronger at than maybe you were this time last year? Um, I feel like the biggest thing for me this year that has <laughs> improved is like my mindset um, towards the sport. I feel like now. I always, like, in my past years, I always knew, like, I'm very talented. I can be very good in this sport. But I feel like this year, um, I feel like my mindset has really changed. Like, I know that I can really be elite. And so my work ethic has gotten way better, you know. Like, I've gotten stronger in the weight room. I've just had gains all around because I really just believe in myself. I believe in the process. I believe in my coach. So I know that I can be really good. So I feel like everything has just, um, just grown from – the mindset change. How much is it for you to have not only a coaching staff that pushes you, an event coach that pushes you, but a family being so athletic? To I know the, I know where that drive comes from with your dad and your brother and your and even your mom. I mean, every, everybody in the family. How much has all that combined kind of helped you make the jump? Um, is my family is the biggest support system that I have. You know, uh, coming from a very like competitive family, very sports oriented family. You know, that just really instills in me, like, the drive and that work ethic to be good. You know, I want to be the best in my family, you know. So I feel like just having my family behind me really just pushes me to, they've really instilled in me the work ethic and the everything that I need to have, and they really are who've gotten me to this point. I'm assuming your dad could, says he probably could still beat you in a, in a race. Do you ever, you, you all ever have any kind of fun like that? I know, I know how he is. He 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 would still say he could win, right? Um, he he does sometimes. He, not as much anymore. You know, he's a little older now. <laughs> he he knows not to do that. But honestly, yeah, that I grew up with a lot of that, a lot of racing my dad and him saying he's faster. And so, yeah. Can you beat your brother in a 400? Yes. He couldn't run a 400. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, what, how, how did you put the schedule in, in, in indoor? You're, you're, you're at home a lot, it seems like, which we I are. guess is nice. How did you kind of put both schedules together? Well, it's what we talked about earlier. You can't go at a high level every weekend. So what we have is these big meat, low, uh, big meat, low meat, big meat, low meat. So we started off with the Kentucky hosted the first win, now Bellarmine's hosting, so we can uh, do some different things at this event. Then we go into our meet, which is a super unique meet, which is only one of four events on the World Indoor Tour. So it's, uh, we're partnered with Milrose Games and the New Balance Invitational, so it's a, a very unique opportunity. Then we go to the Bellarmine meet to make some adjustments, give people an opportunity, then we'll take the entire team to Boston. The reason we're in Boston so many times uh, that's where the ACC meet is and the NCA meet uh, as well. Outdoor season, we're still tweaking just a little bit, but we're getting a working, working handle on it. Uh, with the Norton facility being as good as it is, why, why leave the city? Uh, uh, we have an expectation that our kids do well in school, and there, we believe there's a direct correlation between elite academics and elite athletics. Uh, especially in our individual sport. So if you don't have to be on a bus or a plane and traveling all the time, it behooves us to stay at home, and especially when you have such a great facility downtown. So that's how we put it together, and that will be our philosophy outdoors as well. Big meat, big meat, off meat, big meat, off meat, big meat, off meat. Any other questions? No? You guys are easy. Appreciate it. Thank <laughs> you.